These guns will probably take a whole bandage. <laughs> Get that in, keep that in, keep that in. <laughs> this is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is a big day. I've got a very special guest dropping in. He's gonna help me milk a snake and, and have a bit of a look around. I'm gonna go and check out some of the other critters with him as well. But for now, I've got a stack of tiger snakes to milk, so follow me. Actually, I need my snake hook. I'm a little bit nervous, because I've uh, got to admit, I'm a big fan of uh, who's dropping in. He's a, just a great bloke. He's done a lot, been through a lot. He's a real mentor uh, in the community now, and um, I won't give it away too much, but um, yeah, he's in Australia at the moment. He loves what we do here with the Venom program and Venom Diaries. So he hit me up on the socials to um, come and drop in and say good day and have a look at how we do things. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting, all right. Now, I got uh, a bunch of tiger snakes to do because it is Tuesday, all right, so it's my main milking day. Um, and this week I'm doing tigers and king browns and then catching up on a few others. Um, and then I'll show you around the corner in a sec. Ooh, nice, nice couple of drops. You can actually see one still hanging off the thing there. Real rich, this is one of those Tassie tigers. Cracker, you can have a go. I'm putting together the venom order at the moment. Logan's just over here prepping venom vials. This is the start of it. So that's the King Brown that's going down for this order. Then we've got the Death Adder and the Taipan so far, but I've still got to combine the Tiger Snake Venom um, and Brown Snake Venom to put together for this July order. Slowly making my way through that. This is like hours and hours and hours of time because I've got to weigh it. It's got to be absolutely perfect. It's got to be obviously dry, which I've done already. Um, but the weights on this is really tricky because I pull it from different bottles. Like as you can see here, I've got to empty it into the one bottle and then get the weights. And if it's exposed to the air for too long, moisture starts getting in, then I've got to redry it again. So yeah, it's, um, it's very time consuming, but I love this part of my job. All right. So I'll just grab my snake hook and we put this fella away. I'm just carrying him around like we're doing the shopping. All right, here you. Back in there. Gonna get the next one out. Door closed. Another big fella. It's already almost August. Um, hey, this is, I think this is six months of Venom Diaries. Is it? It's, I think so. It be. It, I think this is six months of Venom Diaries. Woo! Man, that's flown by. So, um, yeah, it's almost end of July. Um, I've got, wait, I've got a lot to do. Um, in regards to snake catching coming up, collecting. So next month I'll be collecting, oh, this guy's just starting to shed. I'll be collecting um, tigers again, hopefully. Well, that'll be weather dependent, see what happens with, um, if it warms up. Oh, he's keen. He's really giving me a bite. Even spat a bit off the side of the jar there. Yeah, and I've got to go and do taipans up in far north Queensland. Yeah, that's coming up. That'll be exciting. Got this snake hook. Might have one here. Those tubes that you see me pull the hooks out of sometimes, these are just like a hook soak station. So I've just got F10 in there just to, just good hygiene. So I'll just give them a good lap in that. Normally the hooks get soaked um, overnight at least. Where are you, mister? Oh, I'm a big tiger. Nice, chunky fella. Yeah, so six months of venom dyes, that's crazy. That means, how long have you been here, Logan? Six months. Six months, so yeah, yeah, Logan started as we started the venom dyes. Happy birthday. Alrighty, mister. Oh yeah. Good few drops there. Thanks for coming. Look at him hanging off there. 
wild. Oh, don't forget my hook this time. All right, so, yeah, these are all Tazzies. Um, you've probably all seen them on here a couple of times. I've got to do that Naughty East and it's on display there as well. Um, I still remember the first tiger snake I ever caught. Because I, I actually find these snakes, not, not these Tazzies, but the Easterns definitely can be a little wild to catch. They um shorter bodied and they're very fast. They flatten their necks out and they very defensive snakes. And I caught one at Barrington when I was just a kid, um, when I was camping with my parents, but they had no, no idea what I was doing. I just went for a walk down the river there, Cobark River, and um, found one and two copperheads. And it was the first time I found copperheads as well. And the copper, oh, good yield. The copperheads are short, fast, dangerous snakes. And with tiger snakes, pre-antivenom, it was like a... 80% or 85% chance you're going to die if you got bitten by one. You've probably seen that video when I have the care flight doctors here and we mix some venom with blood. That's what happens in the blood system very quickly without first aid. And back in those days, they didn't know what first aid to... I forgot my hook again. <laughs> they didn't know what first aid to use. So, and up until the mid-1950s, tiger snakes were responsible um, for the most fatalities, uh, human fatalities in Australia. Uh, but then when, especially Eastern Australia, was, you know, developed through the early 1900s and I guess into the mid-19th century, a lot of the habitat you find tiger snakes in was um, cleared. They like to be, you know, the high altitude or near water, creeks, rivers and stuff, and it was levelled along with a lot of their prey, frogs and lizards and so on. So their numbers diminished and then... The Eastern Brown took over because Eastern Browns thrive in an urban environment because they love to eat rodents because, you know, wherever we've got people, we've got rodents. There's no lie about that. And a bit of poo in my hand. You've got plenty of... Sh oh, good squirt at the start there. Real good. Straight in. Right. You're a dangerous snake. Yeah, so Eastern Browns took over and now they're responsible for like 60% of fatalities in Australia. But there's still good populations of tiger snakes and they've definitely made a huge comeback because like they actually had a bounty on their head, especially in places like Tassie. Like people used to, ooh, people used to go out and um, literally kill tiger snakes and get money for it. So thankfully those days are long gone. I'm just going to grab my keys and my snake hook and we're going to get that Eastern tiger from display. And then... I reckon we are very close to our special guest arriving. I'm actually really, really excited for it. Really excited. To the point where I'm nervous and I'm forgetting what key goes in this lock. <laughs> this is the one um, Brando and I caught back in November last year. And uh, she gave us a bit of curry when we caught her. I'll tell you that. Brendo spotted her and he was, you know, Brendo's pretty excited generally. And he was, I was on the other side of the river and he was like going bananas. Hey mate, real pretty snake. Just um, really defensive. She is getting better, I will admit. Um, yeah, she's on display here in the, the Wild Venom Center. But look at the banding on her. And that's textbook for a uh, tiger snake. You know, west of Sydney, Blue Mountains, places like that. Nice. Their heads aren't as big as those Tazzies, uh, but they still have. Actually, this is the most behaved she's ever been. She hasn't even flattened her neck once. They're just Their jaws are a lot more flexible than um, the Tazzies, which does make me a little bit nervous. And I keep her so I... Ooh, I separate the different localities with the tiger snakes. There we go. Ooh, oh, that, see that squirt at the end there? Whew. Fire out. So, and you'll notice it's a th different colour. So the Tazzies is like a yellow. Hers is almost clear. But she's actually got slightly longer fangs, but they're thinner. All right, where the Tazzies are a little bit shorter, but they're thicker. 
and that'll just come down to what they're like. These guys are primarily eating frogs, all right, so they haven't got to be overly thick or long for that. I'll even eat fish. Thanks, mate. I think I just heard a knock at the door. <laughs> nah, I think I imagine that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down to the park area and I'm going to meet him. I'm going to bring him up and I'll see you guys back here in just a jiffy. Alrighty guys, so we're halfway through this episode and the one and only Ant Middleton decided to drop in and say good day, and he wants to help, help milk one of the massive king rounds. So. I don't. I don't want to help milk. <laughs> However, Billy has asked me and I will help. It's almost like the flip reverse of SAS. He's now putting me through a task, through a challenge, but more than happy to help out. Mate. More than happy to help out. <laughs> so what do you reckon about our venomous snakes in Australia? Like in, in general, like I know you've only just got here, but... Well, I know that you've got the most venomous snakes in the world and i'm sure you've got the top 10 top 20 here anyway so i'm going to leave it to you mate you're the expert here you're the chief instructor <laughs> on this one i'm going to be a recruit righto so if you just hang back here i'm going to grab this big cranky king brown now i'll restrain him on the pin and pad there once i've got him by the head you come in grab the body and we'll get him on that venom vial all right <laughs> You'll be right. You're a wild man. <laughs> I, am, I am wild, but not in this manner. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Australia's biggest venomous snake. All right, so I'll come this way a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever done this before, actually? Never, never, never done this before. All right, you want to grab that tail for us? Yep. Okay, so, yeah, this is the process. Oh, I can feel the muscles in... The strength. So, did, did you think you were going to be doing this today? No. <laughs> up, up next, we're going to go and feed the crocodile, all right? So you can add all this to your resume. Ooh. So, yeah, you can see the fangs coming through there. So they're not very big on our Australian snakes. Most of them are quite small. But the venom that comes out of them is so dangerous. And, you know, that there would kill you or me. I couldn't even tell you how many times over. But, thankfully, we can use it Just to save... Just that small bit. Just, you know, it's a teaspoon of venom there, so probably a couple of mil, but it's wild, you know, we can use that to save human lives. So mm -hmm. with the program, it takes about 25 milkings to make one vial of antivenom. Right. Um, so that's why we've got so many snakes and that's why we have to do so many. So each fortnight we do a bit over 200 snakes for the program. Amazing. Um, that's really cool. Ultimately saving lives. So right? yeah, now you can say you've helped, helped part of the program, mate. It's good. Honoured, mate. Honoured. <laughs> Um, this will be my first and my last time. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. The, the hard thing cool. with the... Cool. Yeah, it is. It's wild. But that, the hard thing with these King Browns is they don't let go. So he's just chilling away. Um, so what we've got to do is you're going to put his body in the enclosure for me. Right. And then I'll hold on to the venom vial. So you get him in there. Try and get him in as comfortable as possible. Yep. And then... Oh, yeah. All right. So here, you want a closer wow. look? It's amazing to think teeth are tiny, but the punch in that. It'll ruin your day very quick. God. So if I did get bit, what would, what would I have to do? What would be the protocol to ultimately save my life? Let's show you first aid, all right? So you spend a fair bit of time in Australia and you go to some pretty wild areas. We've got snakes, literally. You know Australia's got more venomous snakes than non-venomous snakes? We're the only country in the world with that. Tourist board, don't listen to that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know that. Every, but when everyone talks about Australia, they talk about the snakes, the spiders, and, and the venom, but ultimately, they're hard to find, right? They're not gonna be just slivering around yeah. and crawling around. And... They're not waiting for you on yeah, a yeah. game trail and attack Ant Middleton when he mm -hmm. comes over. It's not like that, um, but people do come into conflict sometimes. They pull a bit of timber back if they're out camping and whack, put their hand on one, or maybe there's one in the garage or whatnot. So. Yeah, this is something we teach everyone that comes here, and that is first aid. It's basic as, all right? all right? So I'll get you to do it yourself. I'm going to talk you through it. Gotcha. So these are designed for snake bite and funnel web spider. Okay, so there's a pressure guide on there. You've got a rectangle. When you pull to the correct tension, you've got a square. So gotcha. in theory, let's say gotcha. you've been bitten on the hand. Yep. You would, you don't need to now because of mm. the demo, but you yep. take that off. Yep. All right, because there's a good chance you're going to swell up. Yep. You're going to go over your bite site three times. So get that so. tension. One, two, 
three. Yep. And do one wrap slightly down here, just half a wrap. Nice. nice. And then start working your way up your arm. Right, got you. So it's like you've got a sprained arm or yep. a sprained leg. It's the same, same sort of deal. So I'd obviously take the, yep, those off. Yep. And then just keep it nice. Try and keep that square. Yep. Yep. And just stretch that bandage out as you're going up. Hey, that's a great indication with the square. I like that. Yeah. Oh, these bandages are fantastic. Yep. And if you wanted to, because you're going to probably finish up about where your elbow is, uh -huh. these guns will probably take a whole bandage. <laughs> Get that in. Keep that in. Keep that in. <laughs> got watermelon and then in would, would I just... Mine are tiny. Would I just... Yeah, just tuck it in. There we go. Nice. So then you immobilise, you sit down, and limit your movement as much as you can. Elevate or not? No, don't no, need to elevate. No, just... just keep it still. Because what's happening, because our snakes have got such small fangs, it's only going into your lymphatic system. So that's the glands below the surface of your skin. So without this, it'll travel 10 centimetres a minute. But that wow. will slow it down for hours. All right. Really? So this will give you hours? Yep. And if, to go and search for, seek help. Seek help, get on the phone, you know, be somewhere remote, EPIRB, whatever. Yep. And if you've got a second one, you'd go from there to your shoulder. If you don't have one, you've got to rip up your shirt and make one. Yeah. All right. So um, continue all the way to the top. All the way to the top. And then, because the lymphatic fluid is triggered with muscle movement, right? So you just keep that arm nice oh, yeah. and still. Nice and still, as, yeah. As still as you can. And then um, wait for help to come to you. All right. There you go. But hopefully you never Life have saver. to use one of these. Life saver. Right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Bill, hopefully is the, is the key word here. <laughs> Mate, this is amazing, absolutely amazing. And yeah, this is what it turns into? This? Yep, so we, we freeze it over there, then we put it, like we're doing venom at the moment. So freeze dried in here. That's tiger snake up here, but that's King Brown, what we just did. Oh, this is what we just done. Yep, so that's crystallized. And you know, stored inside of that glass bottle, you're looking at thousands of years like that. Well, nothing will happen to that venom. So you, this will just stay like this? Literally, as long as you don't put any moisture in there, it should be fine. Wow. Lifesaver, mate. Wow. Lifesaver. Thanks for dropping in. Thank you so much, mate. Enjoyed <laughs> that. Right. Get me out of here. <laughs> Alrighty, how good was that? Well, I am buzzing. So you seen then, got the King Brown there. Woo! I, I had his family in as well, which we didn't film that part. We just had his kids in and, and some of their relatives and stuff. That was really cool to meet all of them. They're all a bunch of legends. and. Ant is a wild man, but a great fella. Um, we went and walked the Komodo. He fed Elvis the crocodile. Um, so we've showed him lots of really cool stuff. So that was really good to get him in there. Like I've been watching Ant for years and years and years online. Um, and then to finally meet up with him. And um, yeah, so that, yeah, it was good. I, I love meeting people like that. Like Ant's had nothing to do with venomous snakes, but he absolutely loves it. And um, you know, he loves the program and what we do here. So it was great to get him in here. So. Thank you, Mr. for dropping in. That was fantastic. Uh, you've got a beautiful family and I'll hopefully see you very soon. Anyway, guys, that is it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you loved it as much as I did. You know the deal, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.